of London's airspace. For a time this afternoon, no planes were able to land or take off at Heathrow or Stansted, and all departures were suspended at Gatwick. London City Airport and Luton were also badly affected, and many airports across the UK reported delays. Air Traffic Control says the computer problems have been resolved, but tonight there are still delays and cancellations. Our correspondent Daniel Bircher has more details. Waterland and Wales have been ordered to cut bills by an average of 5% in real terms over the next five years. They'll still be allowed to add on inflation, but consumer groups have welcomed the move. Our industry correspondent John Moylan is at a water treatment plant in Berkshire. John. Now, it was a moment of humanity amidst the horror of war, the 1914 Christmas Day truce on the battlefields of the Western Front, when British and German soldiers laid down their arms and played football in no man's land. A century later, Prince William has helped to unveil a memorial to mark the event. Natalie Perks reports. Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at 6. The oil giant BP is cutting 300 jobs from its North Sea operations, with industry bosses and unions warning that there could be many more job cuts to come. The company is blaming falling oil prices, which have halved in recent months, and tougher market conditions. Several other companies are also struggling, and the Scottish government is calling on Westminster to reduce taxes on the oil industry. A four-year-old student who went missing during a night out in Glasgow in April 21-year-old Alexander Pacto hit Karen Buckley repeatedly with a spanner and strangled her in his car in the early hours of the morning. He then spent two days trying to dispose of her body as a police search intensified. Today, Karen's father said what had happened was every parent's nightmare and he called his daughter's killer truly evil. Sarah Smith reports from Glasgow. Now, all this week on this programme, we're looking at the challenges around housing in Britain. One issue is the growing number of people now living in shared housing, known as HMOs, houses in multiple occupation, where properties are split into individual rooms. But there's concern that many tenants, often those on low incomes, are living in poor conditions. Our special correspondent, Richard Bilton, reports from Blackpool. Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at 6. Hundreds of jobs are at risk at the steel processing company Caparo after much of it went into administration. Administrators have been called into 16 of Caparo's 20 sites across England and Wales. Like others in the industry, it has been hit by a collapse in steel prices, with many blaming China for dumping its cheap steel in Europe. Tonight, unions are warning that one in six British steel workers now face losing their jobs. Here's our business correspondent, John Moylan. It's a tale of modern Britain. We're facing a housing crisis because of a serious shortage of new homes. Surprisingly, the least affordable place to live in the UK is not London, but Oxford, where property prices are 16 times the average earnings of people living in the city. Oxford Council says they're facing a catastrophe because workers increasingly can't afford to live there. Our home editor, Mark Easton, reports. Islamic State militants in Syria have destroyed another part of the ancient city, Palmyra. They've blown up a Roman arch, which was almost 2,000 years old. So-called Islamic State seized the World Heritage Site in May. Since then, they've also reduced two famous temples to rubble. Our security correspondent, Frank Gardner, reports. Good afternoon and welcome to the BBC News at One. Surgeons in London have developed a groundbreaking procedure to treat one of the major causes of sight loss. Doctors at Moorfields Eye Hospital are using human stem cells to treat age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. If successful, it could transform the lives of thousands of people every year in the UK. Our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, reports. Vladimir Putin says Russia would consider conducting airstrikes against Islamic State targets if approved by the United Nations. President Obama and the Russian leader met for 90 minutes and agreed on the need for a political solution in Syria, but failed to resolve their differences on the future of President Assad. Mr. Putin described the meeting in New York as surprisingly frank. Barbara Pletusher reports. 18 British World War II veterans have been awarded France's highest military distinction, the Légion d'honneur, at a ceremony in London. They're being recognized for their role in the liberation of Europe. Many were just teenagers at the time and took part in the D-Day landings in June 1944. President Hollande has promised to recognize every survivor who helped liberate France. Our defense correspondent Jonathan Beale reports. Good afternoon and welcome to the BBC News at One. Surgeons in London have developed a groundbreaking procedure to treat one of the major causes of sight loss. 
Doctors at Moorfields Eye Hospital are using human stem cells to treat age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. If successful, it could transform the lives of thousands of people every year in the UK. Our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, reports. Vladimir Putin says Russia would consider conducting airstrikes against Islamic State targets if approved by the United Nations. President Obama and the Russian leader met for 90 minutes and agreed on the need for a political solution in Syria, but failed to resolve their differences on the future of President Assad. Mr. Putin described the meeting in New York as surprisingly frank. Barbara Pletusher reports. 18 British World War II veterans have been awarded France's highest military distinction, the Légion d'honneur, at a ceremony in London. They're being recognized for their role in the liberation of Europe. Many were just teenagers at the time and took part in the D-Day landings in June 1944. President Hollande has promised to recognize every survivor who helped liberate France. Our defense correspondent Jonathan Beale reports. Islamic State militants in Syria have destroyed another part of the ancient city, Palmyra. They've blown up a Roman arch which was almost 2,000 years old. So-called Islamic State seized the World Heritage Site in May. Since then, they've also reduced two famous temples to rubble. Our security correspondent, Frank Gardner, reports. Good afternoon and welcome to the BBC News at One. Surgeons in London have developed a groundbreaking procedure to treat one of the major causes of sight loss. Doctors at Moorfields Eye Hospital are using human stem cells to treat age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. If successful, it could transform the lives of thousands of people every year in the UK. Our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, reports. Vladimir Putin says Russia would consider conducting airstrikes against Islamic State targets if approved by the United Nations. President Obama and the Russian leader met for 90 minutes and agreed on the need for a political solution in Syria, but failed to resolve their differences on the future of President Assad. Mr. Putin described the meeting in New York as surprisingly frank. Barbara Pletusher reports. 18 British World War II veterans have been awarded France's highest military distinction, the Légion d'honneur, at a ceremony in London. They're being recognized for their role in the liberation of Europe. Many were just teenagers at the time and took part in the D-Day landings in June 1944. President Hollande has promised to recognize every survivor who helped liberate France. Our defense correspondent Jonathan Beale reports. Tonight on Watchdog, the popular family car bursting into flames. There are hundreds of thousands on the road right now. We'll be explaining which models are potentially dangerous. Hello and welcome to Watchdog. We're live for the next hour, fighting for your rights. Tonight, Star Wars tickets, James Bond tickets, what we're calling the blockbuster tax at the UK's biggest cinema chain. All this advice and more is on our website, so if you're about to book a trip, you might want to check it all out. In touch with us about fires in Vauxhall's Zafira Bees, Andy Mikalski emailed to say his Zafira burst into flames on his wedding night. Michelle also emailed to tell us that her Vauxhall Zafira caught fire in April last year. Charles on email says his Zafira started burning on the school run in March, and he says he and his daughter were lucky to get out. Marie on Twitter says her partner was lucky to get out. They thought they were the only ones until now. And David on Twitter. Your story, sorry. Here on Watchdog.